Billionaire Raj, A Journey Through India's New Gilded Age. This book has been published to wide acclaim. Just a couple of weeks ago, it was placed on the long list of nominees for the Financial Times McKinsey Business Book of the Year Award. I think that learning more about the internal politics of India and the direction of its system of governance and capitalism is something not just that at public policy schools, uh, but that all of us have a huge stake in. In a sense, we all ought to spend more time learning about this country because the direction that it takes uh, will have an enormous impact on the future of the world. I'm going to try and talk about the three fault lines in the book. Actually, India has a much better record of poverty reduction than most people give it credit for. Um, nonetheless, it has amassed wealth at the top of its society more quickly than almost any country in history outside of Russia. India has become a much more unequal society, much more unequal than most countries at its stage of development, much more unequal than the successful um, economies of Eastern Asia, the ones who have made it from poverty to middle income status. The book is in a sense a story of the rise of this extreme wealth at the top of Indian society and an argument that in order to develop quickly, it would be wise to take measures to, uh, to remedy that. That second fault line that I talk about in the book, which is the problem of crony capitalism and corruption, it was this nexus between politics and business that in a sense came to define the darker periods of India's growth story over the last 10 years. This interlinkage between politics and business uh, is one of the biggest challenges that India faces, in particular in its election systems. In a sense, trying to work out in the future the proper balance between accountability and transparency of funding of India's gigantic democracy is, is the second fault line that I deal with in the book. And the third is what I call the boom and bust cycle of India's industrial economies. What used to be true of India's economy was that capital was expensive but politics was easy. And so India faces a challenge. Its old investment model, which was corrupt, but at least in the mid-2000s delivered very high growth, is broken. But there's no new investment model to fix it. And so if India wants to escape its new Gilded Age, and it has to deal with, at the very least, the three fault lines uh, that I outlined.